back to Gerald Chodak. The gold standard for managing men with urinary difficulties, secondary to prostate enlargement, is called the TERP, or transurethral resection of the prostate. This procedure has been around for decades, and the way it's performed is by anesthetizing a patient either with a general anesthetic or a spinal anesthetic, lying them on a table in the operating room, and inserting a metal tube into the penis so that a doctor can visualize the inside of the prostate gland. Using a instrument that allows them to resect or cut away the prostate tissue, they can remove the obstructing tissue and thereby open up the channel so that men can urinate more easily. That procedure is done over the course of about an hour. It's recommended not to do this much longer than an hour because certain complications can occur. The operation is relatively safe and pretty effective at removing the symptoms, but a man will need to stay in the hospital overnight in most cases, and in most cases, a catheter or rubber tube will be left inside the penis so that blood can be drained out and the bladder and the, and the prostate area can be irrigated with a liquid to remove any blood that may be accumulating. So one of the side effects is there can be bleeding, although bleeding causing a need for transfusions is extremely rare, maybe in the order of one or two percent. Um, the procedure, the patient then stays in the hospital generally for one night, sometimes for two or three, and then they go home usually without the catheter, although in some cases a catheter is necessary because the patient may have trouble urinating. Once the procedure is done and the catheter is removed, patients generally do find that their symptoms have greatly improved, so they do get relief pretty quickly and their downtime is pretty short because there's no external cutting on the body, so a man can resume most of his activities pretty quickly. We generally tell them to avoid vigorous exercise for several weeks because bleeding can still occur. Think about it as getting a cut on your skin and you get a scab over that skin and if you peel that scab away, some bleeding will occur. Well, in a similar fashion, that can happen after the transurethral prostatectomy. Uh, one of the side effects that can occur, uh, aside from an infection, which maybe is three or four percent of the time, is men may have something called retrograde ejaculation. That means when a patient has an orgasm or a climax, the fluid may not come out through the tip of the penis. Instead, it goes back into the bladder and that material is removed when they urinate. Some men find that they just don't like that sensation, although the sensation of having an orgasm seems to be the same. So that's one of the other things that can happen. The procedure is pretty effective, although there's a recurrence rate over the next five to 10 years of about 15% of patients. One of the things you wanna know from your doctor is how much experience they have. The more experienced doctors are probably going to have a lower likelihood of getting a recurrence over time. Is there anything you can do to prevent recurrence? Not really. We don't really understand enough of the things that cause your prostate to grow. So in general, we simply follow you after you've recovered, monitor you for a change in your symptoms. But overall, this is an excellent procedure and all the other procedures that have been developed that'll be discussed in the other videos are aimed at trying to get as much improvement as you can get with the TURP or transurethral prostatectomy. So that information should be helpful as you consider all of the options, all of the surgical options for managing this disease. Thank you.